everyone. I hope you're healthy, happy, and safe. Last week, I read a book to you in the chicken coop, and I gave you three clues about where I'd be this week. The first clue was, you can find them all around West Hartford. The second clue is, it's a way of saying thank you to our essential workers. And the third clue is, it's a symbol for a holiday in February. If you guessed that I'd be standing next to a heart, you were correct. This heart is one that I made for my house as a way of saying thank you to the essential workers. This week, I'm going to be reading you this book, Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch, written by Eileen Spinelli, pictures by Paul Yalowitz. Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch, story by Eileen Spinelli, pictures by Paul Yalowitz. Mr. Hatch was tall and thin, and he did not smile. Every morning at 6.30 sharp, he would leave his brick house and walk eight blocks to the shoe lace factory where he worked. At lunchtime, he would sit alone in a corner, eat his cheese and mustard sandwich, and drink a cup of coffee. Sometimes he brought a prune for dessert. After work, he would make two stops, at the newsstand to get a newspaper, and at the grocery store to buy a fresh turkey wing for his supper. After supper, he read the paper, took a shower, and went to bed early. He keeps to himself. That is what everyone said about Mr. Hatch. One Saturday, when Mr. Hatch stepped onto the porch with his dustpan and broom, he got a surprise, a package wrapped in brown paper. He had never spoken to the postman before. Thank you, Mr. Goober, he said. Mr. Goober smiled. You're welcome. I always enjoy delivering packages. Mr. Hatch tore the brown paper off. Inside was a white box, which he opened to find another box. This one was heart-shaped, all satiny red with a pink bow on top. It was filled with candy. Something fluttered to the porch floor. It was a little white card. He picked it up. It said, somebody loves you. Only then did he remember that this was Valentine's Day. Mr. Hatch wondered and wondered. Now, who would send this to me? He was all alone. He had no friends. And yet someone, someone had sent him a valentine. Who? Who? He put the box on the coffee table and tried to do some dusting. But every time he left the room, he had to keep peeking to see if the box was still there. He dusted and dusted, and the dust cloth seemed to whisper, Somebody loves you. Somebody loves you. At last, he flung the dust cloth away and exclaimed, why, I've got a secret admirer. And then he did something he had never done before. He laughed. He laughed and danced and clapped his hands. And then he took a piece of candy from the box and ate it. Mr. Hatch changed his shirt and found some old aftershave in the bottom drawer. He splashed it on his face. He picked out a yellow tie with blue polka dots and put it on. And then he went for a walk. Maybe he thought, I will meet the person who sent me the candy. Of course, no one had ever seen Mr. Hatch wearing a tie or smelling of aftershave or smiling, so he got a lot of attention. Mrs. Weed tripped over her dog. Mr. Dunwoody nearly fell off his ladder, and little Tina Finn spilled all the toys out of her wagon. Mr. Hatch waved to them all. On Monday, it was back to work. At lunchtime, Mr. Hatch sat in the middle of the cafeteria. He spoke to everyone and passed out chocolates from his heart box. On the way home, as usual, he stopped at the newsstand. Mr. Smith handed him his, the usual newspaper. I think I'll have a pack of mints, mints, said Mr. Hatch. Not as usual. Mr. Smith was shocked. Was that you speaking, Mr. Hatch? Indeed it was, said Mr. Hatch. I said I would also like a pack of mints. And if you don't mind me saying so, Mr. Smith, you don't look very well today. Mr. Smith recovered from his shock to reply, you're right, I don't feel very well. I have a cold. I was supposed to go to the doctor's this afternoon, but the stand has been so busy, I haven't had the time. Mr. Hatch smiled, why, I'd be happy to watch the stand for you while you go. Mr. Smith could hardly believe his ears. You would? Certainly, just show me what to do. And so Mr. Hatch ran the newsstand for an hour. 
He wondered if any of the women, women who stopped to buy a paper or a magazine or a candy bar had sent him the mysterious Valentine. When Mr. Smith returned, Mr. Hatch made his usual stop at the grocery store. I'm a little tired of turkey wings, he told Mr. Todd. I think I'll have a nice, fresh slice of ham. Mr. Todd weighed the meat and wrapped it. You look worried, said Mr. Hatch. I am, said Mr. Todd. My little girl is late. She hasn't come home from school yet, and I can't leave the store to look for her until my wife arrives. Goodness, why didn't you say so, said Mr. Hatch. I'll go look for her. And so he walked to school and found little Melanie Todd by the swings, and he brought her home. Thank you, thank you, said the grocer. Anytime, said Mr. Hatch. After supper, Mr. Hatch did not bother to read the paper. He decided to bake brownies instead. It would be nice to have brownies to share the next day with the people at the shoelace factory. As he baked, the warm chocolate smell of brownies floated through the neighborhood. Children gathered round Mr. Hatch's house, sniffing the air. Well, I suppose the factory can wait, said Mr. Hatch, as he looked out the window, and he brought out two platefuls. Now what are brownies without lemonade, he said, and he stirred up a nice cold pitcher. When the parents came to gather their children, they had some brownies too. It turned out to be a picnic in Mr. Hatch's backyard. He dusted off an old harmonica and played songs. He remembered from his boyhood. Everyone danced. And so the days and weeks went by. When Mr. Hatch wasn't smiling, he was laughing. And when he wasn't laughing, he was helping someone. And when he wasn't helping someone, he was having a party in his yard on his porch. He seemed to have forgotten about finding the person who sent him the valentine. Then one afternoon, Mr. Goober, the postman, came to the door. His face was very serious. Come in, Mr. Goober, said Mr. Hatch. You look upset. I am upset, he said. I made a mistake some time ago. My supervisor is very angry with me. Do you, do you, do you recall the package that I delivered to you on Valentine's Day, I think it was? Yes, I believe so, said Mr. Hatch, beginning to feel a little uneasy. I don't suppose you still have it, Mr. Goober said sadly. As a matter of fact, said Mr. Hatch, I still have the box. The candy is gone though, why do you ask? The postman took a deep breath. I'm afraid I delivered it to the wrong address. It was supposed to go to another house. Mr. Hatch recalled tearing off the brown paper. It had never occurred to him to look at the address. He fetched the heart-shaped box and the pink bow and gave them to the postman. I do hope your supervisor won't be too angry with you now. The postman was headed down the sidewalk when Mr. Hatch called from the porch. Mr. Goober, I forgot something. He gave the postman the little white card. Somebody loves you. Alone in the living room, Mr. Hatch sighed. Nobody loved me after all. And then he read the paper, took a shower, and went to bed early. The next morning at 6.30 sharp, Mr. Hatch left his brick house and walked eight blocks to the shoelace factory. At lunchtime, he sat in the corner by himself, ate his cheese and mustard sandwich, and drank a cup of coffee. After work, he stopped at the newsstand for his paper, but he did not speak to Mr. Smith. And we ordered his turkey wing from Mr. Todd. He did not smile. Nor did he pat little Melanie Todd on the head or bake brownies or have picnics or parties or play his old harmonica anymore. Everyone whispered, what's wrong with Mr. Hatch? Mr. Goober, the postman told him. We love Mr. Hatch, insisted Mr. and Mrs. Dunwoody. He gave us flowers for our garden. He helped to mend our back fence. Mrs. Weed nodded. I love him too. He saved his bones for my dog, Rufy. Rufy barked. She loved Mr. Hatch too. Mr. Smith told everyone how Mr. Hatch had watched his newsstand so he could visit the doctor, and Mr. Todd told everyone how Mr. Hatch had found his little girl. All the children in the neighborhood remembered Mr. Hatch's wonderful brownies and lemonade, and most of all, his laughter. Poor Mr. Hatch, they said. What can we do? Then Mr. Goober announced, I have an idea. On Saturday morning, Mr. Hatch woke to a bright and sunny day. He put on his old overalls and went out to the porch with his dustpan and broom. He couldn't believe his eyes. All over the porch were red and white hearts and pink bows, 
There were boxes of candy on the chairs and yellow streamers flowing from the ceiling and sticking up out of the mailbox was a shining silver harmonica. The front yard was filled with people, happy, smiling people. They were holding up a huge sign with hand-painted letters. It said, everybody loves Mr. Hatch. Mr. Hatch dabbed a tear with his handkerchief. I do believe, he sniffed, somebody loves me after all. And then he smiled and then he laughed and then he hurried down to be with his friends. I hope you like that book. I love it. I particularly love the fact that it shows how contagious love can be and that Mr. Hatch gets the present by mistake, but then it turns into something fantastic. He knows that somebody loves him and he shares his love with everyone in the neighborhood and then the neighborhood returns the love to Mr. Hatch. Next week, I'll be reading another book. And the three clues are, they are blooming right now, they are really tall, and bees love them. See you next time.